The Mexican Chernobyl. In the early 1980s, a series of bizarre events led to Mexico's biggest nuclear disaster, and it happened only miles away from the United States border. On December 6, 1983, Vicente Sotelo Alardin and Ricardo Hernandez, two maintenance workers from the Specialties Medical Center in Ciudad Juarez, were told to gather old equipment from a warehouse to be sold as scrap. The two men then spotted a Picker 3000 radiotherapy cancer treatment machine with no labels or warnings and disassembled it with a hammer. Unknowingly, Vicente and Ricardo pried apart a nuclear device. The machine contained 6,000 small cobalt-60 pellets, a radioactive isotope that emits high-energy neutrons and gamma rays. The two workers took part to the machine to a local junkyard using Vicente's pickup truck. Several pellets fell out of the vehicle along the way and spread nuclear energy all over Ciudad Juarez. After selling the scraps, the pickup truck broke down and was left behind next to the Rio Grande. After fixing it a few days later, Vicente left the vehicle in his home in a populated neighborhood for weeks. On January 16, 1984, one of the trucks carrying radioactive material sold to the junkyard passed through New Mexico and was caught by radioactive sensors from the Los Alamos National Security Lab, where the Manhattan Project was developed. The vehicle's radiation was then measured by authorities and emitted an astounding 1,000 rems, three times the needed amount for nuclear poisoning. American authorities then contacted the Mexican National Nuclear Safety and Safeguards Commission, which tracked down Vicente's truck and all the pellets. While the U.S. authorities were able to gather almost all the radioactive steel that crossed their border, Mexican officers struggled to find all the missing pellets. In addition, the authorities mishandled the truck, as it was temporarily left in a public park, secured only by a fence. As the Mexican government struggled to find all the contaminated material, the U.S. Department of Energy provided them with a helicopter equipped with sensors. And even though they eventually found most of the pellets, it's believed that thousands of tons of radioactive steel traveled all over Mexico to be used in housing and buildings. The collected hazardous material is currently stored in a nuclear graveyard in the Somaliyuca Desert. According to experts, the facility is improperly built, and there's a risk of pollution to underground water deposits. Although an official report by the Mexican National Nuclear Safety and Safeguards Commission stated that the hospital didn't comply with the requirements to store the machine, the clinic's administration blamed Vicente, who was allegedly coerced into signing a confession admitting that he stole the equipment. It's impossible to calculate the incident's impact, as the contamination could be spread all over the country. However, Vicente survived and only suffered mild stomach symptoms, earning him the nickname the Bionic Man. The Kishtim Disaster The Kishtim Disaster is rated 6 on the International Nuclear Event Scale, making it the third most severe nuclear accident of all time behind the disasters in Fukushima and Chernobyl, both at level 7. Still, it remained a secret for almost 20 years. In the late 1950s, the guarded city of Oziorsk, Russia, and its suburbs were the home of the Mayak plant, which produced plutonium for Soviet nuclear weapons and fuel. After the facilities were built in 1948, all six reactors dumped high-level radioactive waste into nearby lakes until a storage facility for substances was built a few years later. Still, the materials continued to be altered by residual decay heat from the nuclear reactions. On September 29, 1957, one of the coolers around the tanks failed, triggering an explosion with the force of 100 tons of TNT. Although there were no immediate casualties, the explosion released radioactive particles into the Soviet air. As a plume filled with cesium-137 and strontium-90 moved towards the northeast, a 20,000 square mile densely populated area became contaminated. Referred to as the East Ural Radioactive Trace, the region was ordered to evacuate until a week later to maintain secrecy. In total, about 10,000 citizens left their homes. Throughout the next two years, the locals continued to relocate, but the damage was done. Several studies estimate the number of casualties related to the accident from 200 to 8,000. By 1968, Soviet authorities disguised the area by creating the East Ural Nature Reserve, which closed the land to the public and only allowed authorized personnel. The explosion remained a secret until 1976, when the so-called Kishtim incident was disclosed in a scientific magazine article. 
Still, official documents relating to the disaster were classified until 1989. The Golania Accident In 1985, the Instituto Golano de Radioterapia, a private radiotherapy clinic in Golania, eastern Brazil, moved to a new building, leaving behind a cesium-137-based therapy unit. The radioactive material was enclosed in a shielding canister, but legal wranglings prevented the container from leaving the facilities, and a security guard was hired to protect it. On September 13, 1987, Roberto dos Santos Alves and Wagner Mota Pereira entered the facilities and managed to steal the equipment using a wheelbarrow. Once in Alves's home, the men began dismantling the machine and immediately became ill. Pereira went to the hospital the following day after noticing a burn on his hand that required urgent care. However, Alves soldiered on, and after piercing the sealed container with a screwdriver, he saw a bright blue light from radiation. Before going to the hospital for an ulcerated arm, Alves sold the items to a junkyard owned by Devair Alves Ferreira. The man was fascinated by the glow and took the items home. Over the next three days, Ferreira invited family and local neighbors to marvel at the blue light. His brother even took some of the cesium with his bare hands and sprinkled it onto a floor where his young child played. However, Ferreira's wife took the substance to a hospital to be examined, and the news of a massive radioactive leak was soon broadcasted all over the world. Over 250 people were diagnosed with radiation contamination, and over half of them suffering from internal cross-contamination. Sadly, four people succumbed to the injuries, including Ferreira's wife, two of his workers, and a young child. By then, the Golania accident had already spread radioactive material throughout the local airport and several districts surrounding the area. K-19 Submarine K-19 was the first submarine of Project 658, the first generation of Soviet nuclear U-boats equipped with nuclear ballistic missiles. The vessel was hastily built during the arms race as a response to America's development of nuclear submarines. From the beginning, the Soviet submarine suffered two fires and a collision, inspiring crew members to nickname the vessel Hiroshima. The nickname took literal meaning on July 4, 1962, when a leak in the reactor's cooling system caused the pressure to drop to zero during a series of exercises off the Greenland coast. The emergency system immediately inserted protective control rods, but due to decay heat, the reactor's temperature rose to 1,470 degrees Fahrenheit and poisonous steam was released through the submarine's ventilation system. The captain then ordered the engineering crew to create a new cooling system, even though this required them to work within the radioactive zone. Several American warships offered to help after picking up the vessel's distress call. Still, the captain was fearful of giving away crucial Soviet intelligence and refused. Instead, K-19 met up with a diesel-powered Soviet submarine, but by then, the entire crew had come into contact with radioactive materials. K-19 was towed into port and contaminated a 2,300-foot wide area. Within two years, 22 crew members perished due to radiation illness. The Soviet Navy eventually dumped the damaged reactor into the Kara Sea. NRX Truck River Incident The National Research Experimental, or NRX, was a nuclear research reactor at the Truck River Laboratories in northwestern Ottawa, Canada. The multipurpose research reactor was primarily used to test materials and fuels, develop new isotopes, and produce neutron radiation beams. But in its early operation years in the 1940s, the NRX was the most intense neutron source in the world and the most powerful research reactor, turning Canada into the leader of physics research. On December 12, 1952, a powerful excursion and partial loss of coolant in the reactor occurred. Due to mechanical problems, the control rods couldn't be placed in the core, which melted down when they overheated. Similar to Chernobyl, hydrogen gas caused an explosion that tore off the multi-ton reactor vessel seal. Hence, 4,500 tons of radioactive liquid was spilled all over the Chuck River reactor's basement, releasing 10,000 curies of materials into the atmosphere. Cleanup at the Chuck River facility has required months of hard work, mostly carried out by 150 Navy personnel, including future U.S. President Jimmy Carter. The reactor core, damaged beyond repair, was buried. The refurbished reactor at the NRX continued to operate for 45 more years and was permanently shut down in 1993. As of 2021, the Chalk River Laboratory site is undergoing decommissioning. 
Thank you for watching our Dark 5 video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon on this and all our other channels to be notified of our newest content.